Welcome back to the program. We continue to discuss the controversy surrounding Madagascar's COVID organics, so-called cure from the country, Dr. Oluwashiun Akiemi. He's a consultant public health physician at the UCH Ibadan. He joins us now to take a look. Thank you, doctor, for speaking to us on the program. Thank you for having me. Now, despite the reservations, several African countries, including Nigeria, have already ordered COVID organics, which is produced from the Artemisia plant, the source of an ingredient used in malaria treatment and other Malagasy plants. Could the answer to defeating this pandemic be in traditional medicine? Yes. Um, thank you once again. The, uh, traditional African medicine has a lot of potential. However, we have not invested enough in it. We have not spent enough money on research. So for us to bring out the potential of the traditional medicine from all over Africa, we need to subject it to clinical trials. Uh, we can't just wake up one day and say, oh, this works. And then we expect the whole world to accept it. Um, there are protocols for uh, subjecting uh, medicine to, uh, to trials before we can say, oh, they work. These are the side effects. This is the efficacy. You first have to start from um, animal studies. Then you go on to... Um, trials in um, healthy subjects before you go to patients. And then even after it is approved, you have post-market um, surveillance. So there is this standard protocol that is global. I don't think we should expect um, traditional African medicine to be different. So I believe that what one of the things that is causing controversy in the case of this COVID organic is because it has not gone through the requisite um, clinical trials. So we can't just wake up and say, shake it like a, a one that, oh, this is the cure. We must be open. We're in a global community. And if we want the whole world to respect our innovation, we should be open. We should subject these drugs to clinical trials. It's in the best interest of the public. We need to be sure that these drugs are safe and that they actually work. So, but I agree with you, the uh, traditional African medicine has a lot of potential. We only need to harness them so that we can share them with the rest of the world. Yes, it's true. Even the World Health Organization has said this organic should be subjected to clinical trials. Uh, but must the solutions be subject to WHO's approval? Because many Africans are asking, why can't Africa look at you know, indigenous solutions to this pandemic? Yeah, I believe the WHO is only a coordinating body. It's only a coordinating um, organism. And most African countries, if not all, see they are member countries of the World Health Organization. So if we say the WHO says this, we're actually saying that this is what we are all saying. We are also member, Nigeria is a member of the World Health Organization. And all uh, ministers of health are members of the World Health Assembly who make all these um, policies. So I believe that we need to work with the WHO or else there will be chaos. The, it's not as if the WHO is um, giving directive, but the WHO has a, uh, a responsibility for public health on the global scene. So I believe that if we are saying that, oh, we believe that this may work, we should work hand in hand with the WHO. We should be open if we have nothing to hide. I believe that we should be open. We should share and um, subject these uh, candidate drugs to our best practices, which are the clinical trials. I believe this is the way to go so that whatever comes out of it, the whole world will know that, oh, this is a valid a validated drug and it's something that has been taken through um, the necessary care and has been certified as safety. We want to be sure that this drug is safe, not only in the short term, also on the long term. We don't want to uh, have to withdraw it because we discovered that it's causing one genetic or um, one 
very serious side effect in the population down the line. So I believe that we're all members of the WHO. We should work with the WHO so that there will be order and there won't be chaos. All right, Dr. Oluwashiun Akiyemi, public health physician at the University College Hospital at Ibadu. Thank you for speaking to us. We do hope something good, something positive comes out of this. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Well, Malawi's main political coalitions continue to defy COVID-19 prevention measures in campaigns for a fresh presidential election in July. Huge political rallies were held over the weekend that completely defied social distancing and mask wearing measures hours after the country reported its highest single day spike in confirmed coronavirus cases. Malawi is to hold the vote on the 2nd of July because the re-election of President Peter Mutharika in May 2019 was nullified by the country's constitutional court. Opposition candidate Lazarus Chakwera, who has formed an alliance of nine parties, held a huge campaign rally in the northern city of Zunzu on Sunday. President Mutharika's running mate Atupele Muzulu also addressed the huge gathering of his own on the same day in the capital. The long way. Well, over in Uganda, President Yoweri Museveni is not taking any chances. He says it would be madness to hold general elections while still dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. He told the Ugandan broadcaster NBS that if the pandemic was not brought under control by July, then plans to hold the elections in early 2021 would have to be reviewed. There are 122 confirmed cases of the pandemic in Uganda so far with no deaths. Public gatherings, including political rallies, have already been banned as part of social distancing measures to halt the spread of the virus. At least 24 candidates have declared an interest in challenging Mr. Museveni and had started grassroots meetings, though these have been put on hold because of coronavirus. Closing on a light note now, a young Somali mechanical engineer has built a prototype of a ventilator that he believes could help patients in his country that has a poor health care system. Somalia's health system is ill-equipped to fight the virus. There are only 19 ventilators available in the country that has a population of approximately 15 million people. When Somalia announced its first COVID-19 death, Mohamed Adawe, a 21-year-old mechanical engineer from Mogadishu, decided he would put his skills to good use. He came up with this homemade ventilator, which he hopes can help patients breathe. I watched the man on social media talking about how his father had died because he didn't have access to oxygen and a ventilator rather than a lack of care. That's when I decided to make my own ventilator to help. Mohammed is on his way to a hospital in Mogadishu to test out his prototype device. His efforts are made all the more important as Somalia confirmed 1,054 cases as of Sunday with 51 deaths, the highest number of fatalities in the region. The coronavirus situation in the country is very critical. People are dying of coronavirus and a lack of oxygen because there are very few ventilators in the country. Dr. Fauzia Nu, Somalia's health minister, agrees the situation is urgent. But what we need for the time being urgent is to get the medical equipment we have requested several times. Yes, we are getting some. But as I was talking about the testing, PCRs, we need uh, rapid tests, we need, we need ventilators, we need oxygen plants, which is missing in the country and in, in, for all states, because the need in Mogadishu or in Banadar is the same as such of the rest of the countries of all the states. Mohammed's invention may seem rudimentary, but many hospitals in Somalia only have basic handheld oxygen pumps. Mohammed is convinced his makeshift machine can save lives. And on that positive note, we end Network Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Layo Adeguke.